It's no secret that Courage the Cowardly Dog was one of, if not the darkest show to ever air on Cartoon Network. Episode after episode, this show made it its personal mission to scare the pants off of any child who watched it, and we loved it just the same. As with most shows from my childhood, there was one particular episode that stuck with me more than the others. In fact, it's one of the only episodes of Courage the Cowardly Dog that forces me to ask myself, did they take it too far with this one? The episode in question is the Season 3 episode titled The Quilt Club, and within the first few minutes, I could tell that there was something wrong with the Stitch Sisters. The Quilt Club started with showing the Bag family, which, as you know, included Muriel, her husband Eustace, and their pup Courage. The family was visiting an old, dust-filled handicraft store run by two eerie-looking sisters, and they weren't eerie-looking because they were conjoined twins, either. The creators just drew them to look super creepy. The sisters went by the names Elisa and Eliza, with their last name being Stitch, which was either a heck of a coincidence or a self-given last name. As I mentioned before, Eliza and Elisa were conjoined twins who shared a single body. The pair were attached to each other at the collarbone, which meant it was basically two heads growing out of one body, but everything else was normal. That is, aside from the creepy faces. I know that sounds mean, but seriously, much like many of the villains that appeared in Courage the Cowardly Dog, you could just tell by looking at them that they were up to no good. I'll get to that, though. The episode begins as Muriel was rummaging and searching through a bunch of different fabrics in the dust-filled shop. Courage was helping her look, but Eustace couldn't be bothered because, according to him, the dust aggravated his allergies. As they were looking through the shop, though, she noticed something that immediately caught her attention, and unbeknownst to her, would lead Muriel down a rabbit hole that she almost didn't make it out of. The thing she noticed was a sign over the cash register that advertised for a quilt club. Muriel was immediately fascinated by the quilts that the club allegedly made together, and she wanted to be a part of it. But what exactly was Muriel willing to give up in order to become a member of the quilt club? I know that's a weird question to ask when you're referring to something like a club centered around quilting, but believe it or not, Muriel was willing to give up almost everything. You see, when Muriel asked the Stitch Sisters about the quilt club, she also presented them with some swatches of quilts that she had made. I know this is a minor detail to some people, but I really liked that Muriel not only showed interest in a hobby, but also in a hobby that tracked with her character. I feel like there were tons of episodes that she had a brief scene of Muriel sitting in her rocking chair in the living room working on a quilt. So to have that come back and play what was a pretty pivotal role in a horrifying episode is cool. The issue in this episode, though, was that Elisa and Eliza Stitch didn't seem interested in Muriel's quilts at all. As Courage's owner was showing them her swatches, the sisters claimed that they preferred her to make new memories. In other words, they wanted Muriel to create something new and present it to them. This, however, turned out to be a ploy to get Muriel sucked in into their wicked quilt club, literally. Muriel didn't like the idea of being turned away from a quilt club, especially since quilting was one of her favorite things to do. So she got right to work making the perfect example quilt to show the twins. The show made it seem like she was working her fingers to the literal bone, and in the process, she began to forget about her family entirely. Yeah, that's how serious she was taking it. By the time Muriel's quilt was done, she had managed to push Eustace out of her mind entirely, and couldn't remember him even if she tried. This pleased the Stitch Sisters, and after seeing that she was ready, they proclaimed it was officially time for Muriel to join the club. But do you really think it's a club that she would be a part of if it made her forget about her loved ones? Now this is when things start to take the strange, creepy turn that every episode of Courage takes, as the Stitch Sisters introduced a strange symbol into the equation. Anyone who has seen The Blair Witch Project, or basically any horror movie, can tell you that strange symbols are never a good thing. The episode continued with the Stitch Sisters showing up at Muriel and Courage's home in the middle of nowhere with their quilts in hand. They appeared to be ready to accept Muriel into the club and explain that all she had to do in order to make it official was to embroider a specific symbol on the back of a piece of fabric. After that, Muriel would have to take that fabric and sew it into the quilt. According to the sisters, this is something that every person who has joined the quilting club has done. Now, is that a nice sentiment? Having every member of a club contribute to the club symbol, which in this case is a quilt. But the thing is, even as a child watching the show, I knew that something was up with the Stitch Sisters and their weird cult-like symbol that they had Muriel embroidered. Lucky for Muriel, Courage was the most suspicious dog in the universe and could smell something fishy from a mile away. As Elisa and Eliza were showing Muriel the symbol that they wanted her to use, Courage managed to take a picture of it. The episode continued with Courage taking the picture up to my personal favorite character in the show, his sassy computer. Courage scanned the image of the symbol into the computer, and through his research, stumbled onto something horrible. According to the computer, Elisa and Eliza's stitch aren't just old, they might be ancient. 
They had apparently been alive for hundreds or possibly thousands of years by tricking people just like they tricked Muriel. The computer revealed that the symbol that they were having Muriel embroider was a symbol of everlasting life, and the twins supposedly tricked unsuspecting victims into stitching that symbol into their quilt, thus trapping their souls and stealing their life force. Now, that's terrifying, but would you believe me if I said it only gets worse from here? After learning about the horrid scheme that the Stitch sisters were up to, Courage did the best he could to help Muriel out of her sticky situation. The episode continued with Courage running downstairs to stop his owner from making a big mistake, but it was already too late. Muriel had finished her patch and was preparing to meet the other members of the club. It was at this point that she realized what we already knew and feared. The other members of the quilt club actually made up the Stitch Sisters quilt. The dozens of other previous members were trapped inside of the fabric of the quilt, and sadly, Muriel wasn't far behind. After her piece was added to the quilt, and before Courage could stop the sisters, they began to chant the magic phrase, Weave Beave Belong, Weave Beave Belong, Leave the Circle Never, Weave the Quilt Forever. It's at this point that Muriel was essentially stitched into the fabric of the quilt, which provided some horrifying and borderline gory imagery. Now, it might not have been particularly bloody, but to see Muriel stitched into a quilt felt very serial killery. In fact, there was a suspected serial killer and grave robber in the real world who used to stitch human flesh together to make household objects. His name was Ed Gein, and when the authorities searched his house, they found a belt, a lampshade, and tons of other objects that he had made out of human skin. He was actually part of the inspiration for Leatherface in the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, as well as Buffalo Bill from Silence of the Lambs. That's the vibe I was getting from this episode, which made it an absolute horror to watch as a child. We love to be scared sometimes, don't we? As Muriel's soul entered the quilt, she at least was able to take comfort in the fact that she was not alone. Inside the quilt were dozens of other souls from various decades spanning back the centuries that the Stitch Sisters have been alive. Now, things looked really grim for Muriel, but would Courage be able to find a way to break the spell? Lucky for Muriel, she had one of the most dedicated dogs ever, who quickly thought of a way to reverse the curse that trapped her soul. Much like he always did, Courage fought through his initial fears and got the jump on the Stitch Sisters. He surprised them and tied them up with some yarn that was lying around the farmhouse. After subduing Eliza and Elisa, he had to come up with a safe and effective way to get Muriel out of the quilt. As it turned out, the secret was the opposite of what made her worthy in the first place. While she had to forget her family in order to be inducted into the quilt club, for Courage to save Muriel, he would have to remind her of her family. For starters, Courage took a baby picture of Eustace and sewed it into the quilt, and then quickly grabbed a piece of his own fur and put that in as well. This turned out to be enough to remind Muriel of her family and essentially remove the hold that the twins had on her and anyone else in the quilt. It was at this point that Muriel and the other members of the quilt club came back into existence and in the process unraveled the quilt. Meanwhile, as the quilt disappeared and the sisters lost their power, they were inevitably turned into a patch of fabric containing their picture. All seemed happy in the world of Courage for a brief moment. That is, until a shirtless Eustace came in yelling about his allergies and scared everyone away. This episode of Courage the Cowardly Dog stuck with me over the years, and that imagery of Muriel being sewed into the quilt was pure horror fuel. That said, do you think The Quilt Club could top the list of the scariest Courage the Cowardly Dog Show episodes? And if not, what episode do you think was scarier? Be sure to let me know in the comments below.